the El Popco Studios in Oklahoma City. You're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. We're brought to you by Papa John's. You can go to Papa John's right now and buy your pizza. All right, Barry, time for five and five. Five topics. There's a trend here to start with, so let's get right to it. Josh Heupel, staying or going? Well, if I was guessing, I'd probably guess going. I mean, I think if the Sooners lose a couple more, I think Bob Stoops is of a mind to shake things up. I think it's still possible that Heupel keeps his job, but certainly the offense has struggled. There's lots of question marks about what's going on. I think, uh, I think the mood is uh, it's in the air a little bit to, to do something different, and I think Heupel's the prime suspect. Well, and you said if they lose a couple more games, and I think that's totally possible. Uh, I think the way Kansas State's playing, and since you've got to go on the road if you're Oklahoma, go to K-State and play them, and then obviously on the road against Oklahoma State. Those two games seem really up in the air. I mean, I have no doubt that Oklahoma is going to look really nice against Iowa State on Saturday. But then I think some of those warts come back out against two really good opponents down the stretch. So uh, I think Josh Heupel is probably not going to be, I think he's going to be going as an offensive coordinator. Now, if maybe he wants to stay, retain that co-offensive coordinator role, work on game planning, uh, be the quarterback's coach. Maybe they could work something out that way, but I don't think he's going to be calling plays moving forward because I think the Sooners are going to lose a few more games. All right, let's go to Mac Brown. Is he staying or going? Uh, I think Mac's going even if he wins out. Even if uh, somehow Texas wins the Big, tw Big 12 title, I think Mac's out, and I think he steps down gracefully if, if, he, goes out, if, if he has a successful end of this season. I just think too much has passed with the Texas football program, too much speculation, too much excitement over a possible new coach. Uh, Max got a lot of supporters. He obviously can still get the job done on a certain level. The horns have really rallied around him, but I just can't see Mac coming back. Yeah, I can't either. And you know, the new, uh, had they not been changing athletic directors, you could maybe see him staying, but with the lost odds retiring and um, Steve Patterson coming in, it just looks like it's a new era, a new day and time in, in Austin. And uh, I think Mac will stay on in some capacity at Texas. I mean, I have no reason to believe that he's not going to be involved with Texas athletics in some regard. Think about him as a, you know, a, a, an alumni relations type of guy, a, you know, a fundraiser. I think he'd do a fantastic job in those in those uh, areas. Longhorn Network host. Longhorn Network host. They got airtime to fill. All right, Barry, what about ESPN game day? Coming or going? There's some talk they could be in Stillwater. I think they're coming to Stillwater, and I think it might be even in Stillwater, even if the Cowboys lose at Texas, because um, I think uh, Baylor... Uh, at Stillwater is sort of the, uh, the prime game left on Baylor's schedule. Baylor makes a bid for the Big Bowl. So uh, I think, uh, I think uh, game day very well could be in Stillwater, win or lose in Austin. If, if the Cowboys win in Austin, I think they will, then it's a slam dunk uh, game day in, uh, in the shadow of Boone Pickens Stadium. I'm going with coming as well. I think uh, ESPN game day is on the way to Stillwater. It's been a couple years, but you know what? It's, it, it's always a fun scene. People always have a great time with it, and it is the sign of a big-time game. And I think the Cowboys, I think they are going to win in Austin. I think that is going to set up a game that virtually decides the Big 12 championship. What a game that'll be uh, to see those two teams, those two programs. I said this um, after that Thursday night game. Baylor beats Oklahoma, and Stanford wins a big ball game. What? Where are we? What is this? <laughs> Who are these programs suddenly winning? Well, Baylor and Oklahoma State definitely on the rise that would be a fun game to determine the big 12 champion all right barry our fun question of the week what's your lucky charm hey we just had november 12 2013 which is 11 12 13 some people thought that was lucky what's your lucky charm well i don't want to be a downer here but my lucky charm is gone and it's not coming back these these dates uh, 11 12 13 that fascinates me when i was a kid one of the ways I got through myself through school in terms of just uh, not being bored silly is I would play games with the numbers, and I always loved the days when I would write the date out and it added up to 100. <laughs> For instance, October 21st, 1969. I was in the uh, third grade, I guess. And uh, I you know, do the math. Hey, that's 100. So I'd look forward to figure out when's the next 100 day, when's the next 100 day. Then, of course, I got older and, you know, fifth grade. I didn't do that anymore. And then didn't think about it for 20, 30 years. And then one day in the 2000s, sometimes in the last decade, I got to thinking, you know what? Kids can't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, the uh, 1231 uh, is only 43. You'd need, to, uh, you'd need to live to 2057 to have the next day, uh, the next 100 days. So my lucky charm is gone. I'm just uh, sort of living on fumes. <laughs> 
<laughs> living on the edge. No lucky charm. Well, you know what? I don't have any lucky charms anymore, but uh, back when I was a kid and going to a lot of uh, athletic events as a fan, I had all sorts of little lucky charms. Things that I wore, had to wear this shirt or this uh, bandana or this. I don't know. I don't know what I thought I was bringing to the game to have those things, but it was a comfort. Now I don't have any of that. So do people still carry rabbit's feet? Is that still? I don't know. I have no idea. I, if they you... have dice. People have dice around their uh, windshield, around their rearview mirror. Is that a lucky mirror. charm? I don't know. It's, I don't think it's I aesthetically think... beautiful. I don't know why else you'd have it. <laughs> I'm not sure either. All right, Barry, what about this one? Our last question in five and five. Better highlight the Xavier Henry dunk or the Linus Omar goal. This involves two local connections. Obviously, Xavier Henry, an Oklahoma City native, and Linus Omar, a Barons player that scored between his legs the other day. Well, I mean, uh, any, i got to tell you, anything the hockey guys do is impressive to me. I mean, I, I can't stand up on skates, and they're out there doing tricks with, uh, with sticks and pucks. Uh, but I'm going to go with Xavier. What a great story. Uh, you know, he goes to Putnam City, then goes to Kansas. Maybe comes out a little early from KU. Uh, his NBA uh, career has sort of been stuck in a quagmire, um, not really getting in gear. Lands in Lakerville just when the Lakers, are, the, the roster's uh, bare. They need some ball players. Xavier stepping in, playing very well, making the highlights. I'm gonna vote for. I'm gonna vote for Xavier. Well, I'll tell you what. I watched both of these uh, highlights yesterday for the first time. I didn't see either of them live. I watched them both on YouTube, and the the uh, Xavier Henry dunk made me sit up and go, wow. And the, uh, I agree. Anything on ice I see is difficult because I've tried to skate and it isn't pretty. But that was wow. That was an oh my moment. So I'm going Xavier Henry. But that's kind of fun to have those two, uh, those two yeah. things going on. I, 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 might have to, I might have to check out some Baron stuff if uh, he's going to score any more goals like that. And be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma. <laughs>